Welcome back. This is the PLTW POEs. This is going to be about fluid power. It's been a while since we talked about the uh, looking into these videos, so we're going to go through these hopefully fairly quickly. So we got to talk about what is a fluid. Fluids are anything that flows, and so we're going to transmit a fluid or something that flows to transmit power from one place to another. Now, how are we going to do that is using a fluid. A fluid can be either a liquid or a gas. Now, when it's a liquid, we call it a hydraulic. When you use a gas, we call that a pneumatic. So those are the differences. Now, why, are, why do we use fluids? Well, there's multiple reasons, but the biggest ones are that they can you can use it to do lots of different things, multiplication, so you can do lots of things with varying forces. They're easy to control. You only have one power source or one motor running many operations. They're high power. They don't weigh a lot, like an electric motor weighs a lot in comparison. Uh, you can have low speed torques and you can have it you can work in safe and hazardous environments so because you don't have any electricity you don't have risk of fire so here's some basic power components so you have first you have your reservoir that stores the fluid you have your pipes you have your pumps that convert the take the mechanical power and put the pressure on the fluid you have your valves that control how much the fluid is and where it's going the actuators which actually control the uh, or are converting the fluid power into mechanical power. So here is examples of your fluids. So here's your actuator that turns the mechanical power of this uh, digger front load. And this, we got this guy who's chopping down tops of trees. The simulator, even Jaws himself, is pneumatic and hydraulically driven. So why do we do it? Well, because it's really, really nice to have those hydraulics. So let's talk about some basic stuff that we've already mentioned earlier. Energy and power and torque. What are those words again? Energy is the ability to do work. So we're going to transfer energy from the prime, mo the prime mover or the motor to an actuator. So work is just force times distance. So you're doing a force of 1,000 pounds, for an example, over 2 feet. Now remember, these are in parallel to each other. So if you do 1,000 times 2, it is... 2,000 foot-pounds of work. Power, on the other hand, is the rate of doing work. So this is how fast are you going to do it. And so this is work over time. So you do that same 2,000 pound uh, foot-pounds of work over two seconds in this case. And so you get a 1,000 power units worth of work, or worth of power. Now here's the thing. Horsepower is what we measure motors in. And so that one is, you're going to want to write this number down. One half horsepower is 1,714 1, gallons per minute per PSI. And so what you're going to do is you're going to use this equation here coming up, where you take how fast the flow is, how many gallons per minute, times its pressure, divided by this constant, and that's going to turn it into horsepowers, and, th and that's how you get that. So work on this problem. Calculate the horsepowers provided by the system below to lift 10,000 foot-pounds of force in 3 seconds. Okay, so we put it in. We got 10 gallons coming in at 1,500 PSI divided by the 1,500. That's going to give us 8.75 horsepowers. Now, the fluid power principles. Heat. Law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change one form. So energy cannot be transformed into just pure energy. So work can we take from the heat and we can actually take it. So um, we're taking energy from one force, like the motor, turning it into something else. Torque is a twisting force. That's force times distance, measured again in foot-pounds, but it's different in that it's perpendicular. The force of 10 pounds times this one foot wrench is going to be 10 foot pounds of torque. So torque is a twisting application of how hydraulics and pneumatic motors work. 
they are going to take pneumatics coming in and coming out, and that's going to give a torque on this motor and twisting motion. So the flow is, makes the actuators oper operational, and that's how it happens. To, exent, to extend the cylinder, a flow must be directed into port B. So, in order, so you're going to have your pressures in, and then you have to push on port B, and that's going to push your 1,000 pounds. So there's there we go. To retract it, you're going to subtract out B and add into A. And that's going to cause uh, the piston to move back in. So now how fast that rate flow is going to determine how f the speed of it. So you can have a fast speed if you got lots of flow, many gallons per minute that's going to go quicker. So here's some examples of some motors and they are varying different designs but they all basically do the same principle. They move that as much fluid as possible through the motor or through the pipes as fast as possible or as slow as you want. So if we have with a given flow rate we can actually create an actuators directly affect the actuator's speed. So less volume to displace the faster the actuator. And will the actuator, uh, so the question is, will the actuator illustrated below travel the same speed as it's retracting and extended if the constant flow rate is maintained? No, and that's because the actuator will travel faster as it's retracted due to less volume cause, caused by the actuator shaft, because you have less volume here because of the shaft here. Now pressure, that's going to be how f hard you can hit. That's going to be how much you can push, the force you can push. So we all points are resistance in series within a system contributed to total, total system resistance, including long running pipes and elbows. So if you put a narrower pipe, that's going to increase the pressures. Now pressure is defined by force. Uh, it's force over area equals pressure or pressure times area equals force. So this is called Pascal's law. And Pascal is the guy who really developed all of the pressure laws. Pascal said that in a confined liquid, oh, the pressure is equal in all areas. So how much force is exerted on every square inch of the container? Well, 10 pounds of force is applied to one square inch stopper. So it is 10 pounds because you got the 20 square inches. So what is the total resulting force acting on the bottom of the container? 200 pounds. Pascal's law also states that hydraulic presses, 10 pounds can lift 100 pounds, but there's a trade-off, and that's due to distance. So you have to push down twice as far, or 10 times far, to move the 100 pounds up. And so that is the end of the notes. Now I'm just going to go through some slides with some basic drawings and so if you ever care to look at some pneumatic drawings you guys could actually understand it. So here's a schematic of hydraulic system. So here's some symbols, circles, squares, triangles, arcs, and arrows. They use those to define things. So here are some lines, reservoirs, pumps, flow controls or valves, directional controls, check valves, and motors, cylinders, and that's it. Thank you and have a great day. If you have any questions, ask your teacher.